Hello my darlings, I hope you're all doing very very well, I hope you are sitting comfortably, you are cosy and you have your snacks and your beverages. In today's video we'll be taking a deep dive look at Harry Potter tattoos and the controversy when it comes to the author of the Harry Potter novel and we will be specifically taking a look at a person that is documenting their journey to cover up all of their Harry Potter tattoos because they were a huge fan of Harry Potter and because of how the author is they've decided to you know cover up their tattoos so we're going to take a deep dive look at all of this so at the top of this video I just want to state that I personally have never been like a die-hard Harry Potter fan have I seen the films yes have I read the books? No. So I'm definitely coming at this whole topic in a neutral ground. I know that the fandom is massive. This is one of the most popular, if not the most popular franchises of all time. And I know for a fact that some of you love Harry Potter or loved Harry Potter, or it was just a big part of your childhood, or maybe it's still a big part of your life now, who knows. But I know this fandom is so big and was once loved at least, um, so I do want to tread somewhat lightly um, when it comes to the novel the films but not so much with the author <laughs> i will not give the author any grace at all so i thought i'd do a little backstory as to what harry potter is in case there's anybody out there that doesn't know what it is or isn't too familiar with it or just doesn't know much information about harry potter so harry potter started off as a fantasy novel by the author jk rowling jk rowling was born on the 31st of july in 1965 she's from gloucestershire in england she got a bachelor's of arts degree from University of Exeter where she studied French and classics which for those that don't know is literature I had to google it because I had no idea what classics is okay not a clue <laughs> JK I'm gonna call her JK throughout this whole video I, some people refer to her as Jo some people refer to her as Joanna her real name is Joanna um, but her, her author name is JK Rowling and some people refer to her as she who should not be named <laughs> So I'm just gonna go with JK, okay? Anyway, JK has been married two times and she has three children. JK completed Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone in 1995. And believe it or not, JK actually took the manuscript of this book to 12 publishers and they all said no. They were all like, absolutely not, this is not gonna work. So yeah, Harry Potter was rejected quite a few times. Um, that was until a man called Barry Cunningham at Bloomsbury Publishing bought it. But even he was kind of like, hey, JK, I really don't think this is gonna go far. I don't think this is gonna make a lot of money. He was wrong, very, very wrong. <laughs> the first book was then released to the public in 1997. I believe some of you weren't even born then. I personally only remember the hype around Harry Potter beginning just as the films were about to come out. I really hadn't heard of Harry Potter until obviously the films were, you know, having the trailers shown everywhere and posters put up everywhere. And that to me is when the Harry Potter fandom um, hype started, but it might have been different, but that's just what I know from my memory. In 1997, when the first book was released, I was seven years old. I was born in 1990. <laughs> the premise of the Harry Potter story is basically a boy named Harry Potter, <laughs> obviously, who is an orphan, finds out that he's a wizard, and he goes to this wizard magic school called Hogwarts, and he becomes best friends with Hermione Granger, and Ron Weasley and they get up to a lot of mischief. They learn how to do some magic and they take on some bad guys. That is honestly just the quickest rundown I can give to you. In total there were seven books. We had the first one which I mentioned which was Philosopher's Stone again that came out in 1997 and this book is the third best-selling book of all time. If you think about how many books there are in the world and how many popular ones there are Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone is number three in the world of all time. This book has sold over 120 million 
copies. In 1998, Chamber of Secrets come out. And then in 1999, we had Prisoner of Azkaban. In 2000, we had Goblet of Fire. In 2003, we had Order of the Phoenix. In 2005, there was the Half-Blood Prince. And then in 2007, there was Deathly Hallows. In 1999, JK Rowling sold the rights to make the story of Harry Potter into a film for $1 million, which is obviously a lot of money, but if you think about just how big the series is now, $1 million isn't that much <laughs> if you think about it, because the films have made a lot of money. We'll get onto that in a moment. There was in total eight films. So there were seven novels, but eight films. And that's because Deathly Hallows got split into two parts. So the films nearly come out yearly between 2001 and 2011. We have Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, which was put in theatres in 2001. We have Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets that was released in theatres in 2002. In 2004, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban was put in theatres. And then in 2005, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire was put in theatres. And in 2007, Harry Potter Potter and the Order of the Phoenix was put in theatres. 2009, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince was put in theatres. And then in 2010, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 was put in theatres. And then in 2011, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 was put in theatres. It's a lot of films. There were many, many actors throughout this franchise. Again, there was eight films and there was characters coming and going and regulars and not so regulars. As the three main characters, we had Daniel Radcliffe who played Harry Potter. We had Rupert Grint who played Ron Weasley. And then we had Emma Watson who played Hermione Granger. Like I was saying, there were so many characters that were coming in and out throughout the whole franchise. Um, but other actors that were a part of this franchise were Maggie Smith, Robbie Coltrane, Warwick Davis, Julie Walters, Tom Felton, Alan Rickman, Robert Patterson, David Tennant, just to name a few. There was a lot more very notable names throughout the series, but yeah. Like I was saying earlier, the books and the movies created a massive, humongous fan base. The books themselves were published in 84 different languages. This whole franchise is globally known and has a global fan base. I can't even just imagine how many people are fans of Harry Potter or were once fans of Harry Potter. With the books and the films becoming such a successful hit, other things come into play. We have a theatre show, theme park, games, merchandise. Jesus, so much merchandise. Basically, this franchise has made a lot, and I mean a lot of money. The films alone have made seven billion dollars. Okay, seven billion dollars. And then to add everything else on top of that, can you just imagine how much this franchise is worth? I, I just, oh. JK's net worth at the moment is around about $1 billion. She is a very, 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 very rich lady. Now, like I've highlighted a couple of times, this fan base was huge, okay? And of course, like with a lot of fandoms come fandom tattoos. There are many popular Harry Potter tattoos. You have the always script or the Deathly Hallows symbol. And then we have the portraits of the characters. Honestly, there is so many different types of Harry Potter tattoos in the world. I honestly believe that the Harry Potter fandom has the biggest collection of tattoos when it comes to variety and all of that. For a lot of people, this franchise was an escape to many, many kids and teens and even adults read Harry Potter or watched the films to escape from their everyday life, to escape bullying, to escape the environment that they were living in, to drown out any noise. You know, Harry Potter was there for millions when millions didn't have anyone there for them. And I don't think we should ever forget that. You know, it does mean a lot or has meant a lot to a lot of people and I do want to take that into consideration. I do also want to highlight the fact that the author of Harry Potter is trash. We're going to take a look on GLAD's website. GLAD is a LGBTQIA plus organisation um, and they actually have a page dedicated to JK Rowling's problematicness. Um, I don't know if everything is on here but I guess it just covers the basics. I mean, this is all of it right here. We're going to start from the bottom because it, it, then it would be in date order instead of going backwards. We're going to go from 
when it started to current day kind of thing. Uh, JK Rowling expressed support for a tax specialist who had sent anti-transgender tweets and claims her employment contract was not renewed because of it. Rowling tweeted, dress however you please, call yourself whatever you like, sleep with any consenting adults who have you, live your best life in peace and security, but force women out of their jobs for stating that sex is real. I stand with Maya, this is not a drill. In December of 2019, JK liked a tweet that disparaged transgender women as men in dresses. The late anti-trans YouTuber Magdalene Burns, Burns tweet, read I was shouted at by men at my first labour party meeting aged 18 because I asked them to remove a page three calendar I've been told to be louder stronger independent I've often not felt supported men in dresses get bro I've honestly never seen that word before solidarity I, I never had that's misogyny Rowling representatives blamed the like on a clumsy and middle-aged moment so basically it was a oh, I didn't mean to like that kind of thing. June of 2020, she mocked the phrase people who menstruate, tweeting, I'm sure there used to be a word for those people. Someone help me out. One Ben Wimband Woomud. Now, I can obviously only speak for myself here, um, but if someone refers to me as a person who menstruates, I'm all right with that. That's fine with me. How about it? <laughs> I don't care, like I literally do not care. It's not that deep to me anyway. Using inclusive language just isn't offensive to me. In my opinion, it shouldn't be, but whatever. And then again in June of 2020, she said in a 3,600 word essay in which she explained why she was so worried about the new trans activism, and the effort to erode the legal definition of sex and replace it with gender, Rowland described bathroom access as throwing open the doors of bathrooms and changing rooms to any man who believes or feels he's a woman. Basically, calling trans women predators. Yep. Yeah. Then, on the same day, she sent tweets falsely claiming transgender identity is a threat. If sex isn't real, there's no same-sex attraction. If sex isn't real, the lived reality of women globally is erased. I know and love trans people, but... <laughs> I know and love trans people. <laughs> I can't take this seriously. No, you do not. Uh, but erasing the concept of sex removes the ability of many to meaningfully discuss their lives. It isn't a hate to speak the truth. And then on the same day, wrote an essay about transgender people and identity that laid out five reasons for being worried about the new trans activism, claiming that as an ex-teacher and the founder of a children's charity, she has deep concerns about the effect the trans rights movements is having on both. There is nothing worse than someone being like, oh, but what about the children? They just wanna look at an iPad, behave. Rowling claimed there has been a huge explosion in young women wishing to transition, or are. Population research shows growth overall of young people identifying as LGBT in all categories of the acronym. Scientific research shows detransitioning to be rare, and that other factors around regret of transition include rejection and discrimination play a significant role. And then it goes on to talk about how some of the actors from Harry Potter have spoken out against JK, which I'll get into in a moment. JK tweeted false information equating trans-related medical care with mental health care, writing, Many health professionals are concerned that young people struggling with their mental health are being shunned towards hormones and surgery when this may not be in their best interest. In the same thread, falsely equated transitioning with a new form of conversion therapy for young gay people. And suggested that gender transition is driven by homophobia. <laughs> In August of 2020, JK announced she would return an award she had previously received from the Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights Group after the organization condemned her recent transphobic statements. And then in September of 2020, she authored the book, Troubled Blood. So this was obviously a side project for her or another project for her, um, but she used the author name, Robert 
Gal Braith. You know, just to hide who she was, but I think people figured it out or whatever. Anyway, it says here, it's about a cisgender male serial killer who dresses as a woman to lure victims. A review in the Telegraph said, the book's moral seems to be never trust a man in a dress. Another book in Rowling's crime series, 2014's The Silkworm, featured a transgender suspect. In response, the UK trans children's advocacy group Mermaids gave the following statement to CNN. This is a long-standing and somewhat tired trope, responsible for the demonization of a small group of people simply hoping to live their lives with dignity. We are disappointed to hear that the author might be propagating the same long-standing and hurtful presentation of trans women as a threat. As a children's charity, we are bearing witness to the very real hurt felt by young people who once saw Miss Rowling's fiction as a place of comfort, friendship and escape. The author recently expressed support for trans people's right to live free from persecution. Her latest book might cause those still enjoying her books to question that sentiment. And in March of of 2022, she mocked transgender inclusivity on International Women's Day, tweeting, apparently under a Labour government, today will become we who must not be named. And then again in March of 2022, she tweeted, big love to you, to Carolyn Farrow, an anti-trans, anti-gay and anti-abortion activist, after Farrow complained of having had my life invaded and dominated by insane trans rights activists. According to Pink News, Farrow blamed LGBT plus people when she was barred from traveling to the US, was served an injunction over abusive tweets she sent to a trans woman, described a same-sex penguin pair at a zoo as deviant, and insisted that Disney is losing money because of its inclusion of queer characters, claiming that many families no longer feel safe because of LGBTQ cartoons among other anti-LGBTQ comments. So this is obviously only up to date till 2022. I know JK Rowling has done a lot since, continues to do the whole, I'm just a feminist um, vibe and... <sighs> It's a lot. Honestly, we could be here all day, but I feel like we've covered the basis with this, to be honest with you. Like, it's a lot, all right? She's anti-trans, hides behind the children and the fact that women are being eradicated and, oh my God, stop. Like I said earlier, some of the cast have spoken out against JK because they're like, what are you doing? We do not stand for this. And they want to separate themselves from her because obviously if you have worked alongside her sometimes you do get put in the guilty by association box so daniel radcliffe who played harry potter said in june 2020 while joe is unquestionably responsible for the course my life has taken as someone who has been honored to work with and continues to contribute to the trevor project for the last decade and just as a human being, I feel compelled to say something at this moment. Transgender women are women. Any statement to the contrary erases the identity and dignity and goes against all advice given by professional healthcare associations who have far more expertise on this subject matter than either Joe or I. And then Emma Watson said in a tweet, want my trans followers to know that I and so many other people around the world see you, respect you and love you for who you are. On top of all of this, JK has also been accused of being anti-Semitic. For many years, people have been pointing out that the goblins throughout the Harry Potter franchise kind of resemble Jewish caricatures. I'm very bad at pronouncing that word. I'm literally at the moment looking at the pronunciation of it. I just cannot say that word. I'm so sorry. Um, but these caricatures have been a hallmark of anti-Semitic propaganda. Um, there's this section in a Forbes article that says, what's the problem with JK Rowling's goblins? While goblins are often depicted in fantasy fiction as cruel, greedy, and generally malicious characters, author JK Rowling depicted them in her Harry Potter series as secretive cabal of hook-nosed bankers who maintain continuous relationship with the wizarding world who view them with deep suspicion. While the books absolutely echoed anti-semitic tropes, the Harry Potter films took the racist association a step further with the goblins appearance practically indistinguishable from a Nazi propaganda poster 
Worse was the start of David Patton clearly visible on the floor of Gringotts Bank. This was a feature of the filming location in London's High Commission of Australia and did not appear in subsequent films. There is other undertones of racism and anti-Semitic themes um, throughout the Harry Potter series but again if we go into all of that we will be here for hours. So with all of this information you can now probably understand as to why people are removing their Harry Potter tattoos. Mainly because they do not want to be associated with JK Rowling. And sadly, JK has taken her beloved franchise down with her by basically saying, if you support Harry Potter, then you support me and you stand by my views. And I truly do feel for the fandom. There were so many walks of life that absolutely loved JK and Harry Potter. JK has just completely tarnished and destroyed this whole thing. So yeah, many members of the LGBTQIA plus community and allies have chosen to completely boycott Harry Potter altogether. Some people have chosen to separate the art from the artist and done what they can to not financially support JK Rowling. And then there are people that have just turned a blind eye and basically said, I don't care. I'm going to carry on doing what I'm doing. I love Harry Potter. I love JK. Let's go take my money. For me, obviously, it has been very, very easy for me to not support JK because I've never really been part of the fandom. For my whole life, I have always seen things as black and white. I think it's one of my terrible traits that I have. It's either black or white, okay? I never see a gray in the middle. Um, but with this whole thing, it's just so complicated for a lot of people for so many different reasons. And I think you should all form your own opinions based off of what matters to you. For me though, well, I say fuck JK Rowling and however she makes money. It's as simple as that for me. Anyway, moving along, we are now gonna talk about Harry Potter tattoos. I'm sure that's why you are all here. So what spurred me on to do this video is actually a TikTok creator who goes by the name of Ryan Rawls. Ryan is documenting the fact that they are covering up their Harry Potter tattoos. Their bio says, on a quest to cover up all my stupid Harry Potter tattoos in the year 2024. Ryan does have five TikToks uploaded to their account thus far, but the first one they uploaded is something not to do with this so we're gonna skip that one. So in the first TikTok that Ryan documents the Harry Potter tattoo cover-up series, Ryan documents just how much they loved Harry Potter. In my younger and more vulnerable years I could be quoted saying I love nothing more than Harry Potter and I will never love anything more than Harry Potter. As you can see Maybe in 2024, that statement didn't age well. And my closet is filled with a ghost treasure trove of shirts, knickknacks, Legos, you name it, I probably have it. Basically, Ryan was an absolute diehard Harry Potter fan. Ryan then goes on to talk about their Harry Potter tattoos. Along with the merch came four Harry Potter tattoos that are on my body and I want off my body. More generally, I want to cover them up. My plan is to work my way up from the least embarrassing Harry Potter tattoo to the most embarrassing, atrocious, monstrous Harry Potter tattoo that I have. Out of all of the basic bitch Harry Potter tattoos I could have gotten, I went with the Marauder's Maps footsteps. Now for those of you that don't know, the Marauder's footsteps are from the Marauder's map. I definitely had to google this because I completely forgot. I had no idea. <laughs> but this is the map of Hogwarts, which is the school that Harry Potter goes to to learn how to be a wizard. The map of course is magical and can show you where people are and they will turn up on this map as tiny little footsteps. So if they move in the location where you're looking at the map, you know, you'll see these like little footsteps or what have you. I don't know. Yeah, that's pretty much a rundown. I think. <laughs> I'm sure there's maybe some Harry Potter fans that know a lot about Harry Potter are probably screaming at me like, no, that's not right. But I think that's right, right? That's what um the Harry Potter wiki said or whatever. I don't know. Then in part two of this TikTok Harry Potter tattoo cover up series, Ryan documents what they are having as a cover up. Today's the day I'm getting my Marauder's Map footsteps covered up. I requested a head full of snakes and some background. I honestly did not give a ton of detail. I just said no cobras. So I'm kind of going in blind here. I requested snakes because I've always had a thing for Gorgons. Reputation is my favorite Taylor Swift era and snakes are just freaking cool. We then get to see the design that Ryan is having. Whoa, that's so sick. 
heck? I love that. Yep, and then I I wasn't ah. able to put a lot of flowers in there, but I, I put a lotus there. A little bit. I love that. That's beautiful. Thank Hell yeah. you. You're welcome. Wow. Okay, I'm super excited. <laughs> Yay. Was anyone else expecting just a few like snakes like intertwined just covering up the footstep tattoo? Just like a, a tattoo that goes like from the back of the ear onto the neck a little bit. I was not expecting Ryan to go all out and have the back of their head tattooed. Ryan is literally getting the tattoo fixer special here. Like <laughs> for those of you that don't know, Tattoo Fixers was a tattoo TV show here in the UK. I actually recently just reacted to some clips from the show. If you wanna check that video out, then I'll leave a link down below. But that show is basically known for giving people massive cover-ups when a massive cover-up is just not needed. And like, the writing's going all out here. Like, that's a huge tattoo. <laughs> I just was not expecting that at all, honestly. But jokes aside, I do love the design so, so much. Then in part three of this TikTok series, we see Ryan getting the tattoo and whoo, we first started with sizing the design to my head. Then we did a quick shave, a spritz of alcohol to make the stencil stick, and who didn't let me tell you that alcohol did burn. Unfortunately, the stencil didn't quite line up right with my triangle down there, so we had to re-stencil, and again, ouch, I was burned. Stencil round two was good to go, and my artist took her time filling in all the extra fun bits, like the tail over there and the lotus leaves behind my ears. And finally, it was time for first contact. I won't lie to you guys, this tattoo freaking hurt. I almost tapped out after the first two hours and the outline was done, but then my artist was like, do you want some numbing spray? And I was like, that's an option. The tattoo process was so intense, but it kind of felt like penance for having gotten the footsteps in the first place. And the result was so worth it. I'll see you next time at tattoo cover up number two. Honestly, props to Ryan for going through all of that because, <laughs> ouch. I can't even imagine just how spicy that was. Like that is a migraine waiting to happen, if you ask me. Let me know if you've ever had the back of your head tattooed and how spicy that was and what the healing was like. I can't even imagine the itchy phase with it because one, when a tattoo is healing, it goes through the itchy phase, but also Ryan's hair will be growing back because it was shaved and that makes things itchy. Like if my hair is two days past hair washing day, it gets itchy and that drives me up the wall. I can't even imagine healing a tattoo, having hair grow back. <gasps> but it does look so, so cool. And I'm sure all of the pain and the itchiness will be very much worth it in the end. I also like how Ryan has started off with the most visible tattoo first. That is probably one of the most visible tattoos that they have. To me, that shows that they are willing to take action as quick as possible and that this journey is super important to them and they want to be distanced from Harry Potter as soon as possible. And as we know, Ryan is or was a massive fan of Harry Potter. So yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's a bit of an emotional process for people to go through this, you know, distancing themselves from something that they loved so, so much and meant a lot to them throughout their whole life. Moving on to part four of this series, Ryan talks about their other Harry Potter tattoos. Next on my cover up list, I have this classic sugar skull design. I actually got matching tattoos with, I think, four other of my family members. Um, as you can see, it has the classic Harry Potter lightning bolt as well as glasses. For this one, I plan on maybe darkening glasses so that it looks like sunglasses and erasing the lightning bolt by giving it a hat or a wig of some sort. Um, I don't really want to erase the tattoo in its entirety because I did get it matching with my family member. After the sugar skull cover up, I plan on tackling this. I got this mess first actually out of all my Harry Potter tattoos and it is the musical rendering of Hedwig's theme. I think it's quite ugly now. It didn't hold up very well. The lines are all faded out. Um, it looks quite bad nowadays. I really do not have a plan on covering this one up. So if anyone has any ideas on this one, let me know. I would love to commission any trans artists out there if you would uh, like to hit me up. And finally, I have my most embarrassing tattoo yet, the dark mark. I literally feel like Harry Potter fans have no excuse for getting this one. I don't know what I was thinking. That's, um, that's quite a collection. Ryan has there, isn't it? That's, that's quite a lot. And honestly, some pretty tricky tattoos to cover up there. The skull one would be pretty easy. It's just, you know, line work and what have you. It's a very easy fix or cover up. But the other ones with how big they are or how intense they are, oh my. And for those of you that don't know what the death mark is, it's a very popular symbol from the Harry Potter franchise. And it's one of the most popular tattoo 
symbols from the franchise, but the death mark represents the Death Eaters, who are not very nice characters within the Harry Potter story. Um, someone on Reddit broke it down, it says, but I'm very curious as to why someone would want to get their symbol tattooed on themselves. I mean, the Death Eaters are basically described as the equivalent of an evil racist cult. They're like wizard Nazis. Their symbol doesn't represent anything good. Their ideology is based on killing, torturing, and ruling over those who they consider to be lesser. And they cast the symbol into the sky when they have killed somebody. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> Ryan then goes on to ask people for help with ideas because they're feeling a little bit stuck, which I completely understand. We did it. That's all my Harry Potter tattoos that I have and I plan on covering up. Let me know if you have any ideas on how to cover up that dark mark or the Hedwig's theme because I am so lost and I will take any suggestions. So appreciate you guys. See you next time. So yeah, if you have any helpful ideas to help Ryan here, I'm sure they would appreciate it so so much and I'm honestly stumped for the both of them. I can sometimes come up with a good idea for a cover-up but like I'm struggling with this one honestly. Especially the death mark tattoo. There's so much colour within that, so much line work, the size of it. Like covering that up would be so incredibly tricky. You would have to go very very heavy on the black. And for the music note one, honestly I'm just gonna fall back on the trusty blast over situation. I myself have had a blast over. I had a black and grey sleeve under this sleeve that I have um, right here. I feel like a black work floral blast over tattoo would look really cool where the Ryan makes it into like a quarter sleeve. So it's just like in the inner arm or makes it into a half sleeve. I think Ryan would suit a half sleeve. Two birds, one stone with that one or even maybe a full sleeve. But I feel like doing like the negative space blast over, quite a bit of black work in there, but then the floors around it will brighten it up. It's quite a basic idea, but when you don't know people, you know, I don't know Ryan, I don't know Ryan's other interests or anything like that, I can't give solid advice and design ideas, but florals are always a safe bet. So that's all the TikToks that Ryan has uploaded thus far. I'm sure we'll see a lot more in the future. If you are interested, I'm more than happy to cover Ryan's journey again when there is more development. Um, but of course, over the four part TikTok series that we have thus far, Ryan has got a lot of comments. That's pretty much just like how TikTok works. There is an array of different types of comments throughout Ryan's TikToks. We have many people on Ryan's side that is there to support them and is like looking forward to watching Ryan's journey. So we have a I am glad you're giving yourself grace and moving forward with cool new art. As a former Harry Potter fan I'm sure this couldn't have been easy. I miss that part of my life but good for you in being proactive. This is genuinely awesome. I really respect your dedication to getting them all covered. I'd be doing the same if I had any. Growth is so cool. Thanks for letting us be part of this. There are some people who are completely clueless as to why Ryan is doing this. Why, what happened? Another saying, I don't get it. Why don't you like Harry Potter anymore? And why do you assume people will understand without having to explain it? Wait, what happened? Wait, why are people covering Harry Potter tattoos? What happened? I must know. And there are many, many, many other comments that are like this, of people being like, what is happening? Why are you doing this? And this is actually one of the reasons as to why I said this whole thing isn't black or white. There is a very big gray area in between because there are people that are just genuinely unaware of how JK has been. If I didn't spend a lot of time on Twitter, I honestly wouldn't have known that JK was problematic because again, I'm not in the Harry Potter fandom world one bit. So if it wasn't for me being chronically online, <laughs> I would have no idea. And here's another reason as to why I think this is quite a muddy subject. It's comments like this. Um, one says, I have a couple Harry Potter tattoos I want to cover. I just don't have the money right now, unfortunately. I wish I could afford to cover up my Harry Potter tattoos. I want to cover mine, but it's large and I can't afford to. I hope people understand that cover-ups cost a lot and not everyone can prioritise tattoos in this economy, which is so, 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 so true. I feel like we can't assume everyone with Harry Potter tattoos wants to keep their Harry Potter tattoos. There could be financial reasons as to why why they still have them. Cover-ups and laser are incredibly expensive and the cost of everything at the moment is incredibly expensive. You know, everything 
is going up in price and people's wages are staying the exact same and people are struggling out there. Getting tattoos is a luxury item for many. Um, of course, there is um, tattoo artists out there that are willing to cover Harry Potter tattoos at a discount rate, which is obviously incredibly helpful. Um, but again, depending on where you live, that might not be accessible to everybody. Back to Ryan's comment section across the four part TikToks. We have people on the other side of the spectrum who are basically like, screw everything, screw everyone. I'm still gonna get Harry Potter tattoos in 2024. There's this comment that's saying, I'm getting a Harry Potter tattoo in 2024. And another one saying, I'm getting a Harry Potter tattoo in March. Maybe, possibly, maybe I'm being too nice here, I don't know, but maybe possibly these people don't know about the whole JK situation. It's a case of if you do know and you carry on supporting JK, that's the issue I would say. You know, JK has said in the past, if you support Harry Potter, you support me, you stand by what I say. So yeah, yikes. <laughs> there is also comments from people who have Harry Potter tattoos but they don't want to get rid of them because the franchise means so much to them. Um, so we have a comment here that says, I have creatures from Harry Potter on my leg. I love Harry Potter but I don't agree with JK Rowling and her views but there is comfort in Harry Potter for me. I bought the books when they came out so I do have tattoos about it but I don't want to remove them because I like the series but not the author. I have my arm full of Harry Potter tattoos. Always means always. I love Harry Potter tattoos and would never cover them up. I'm a total nerd. I won't ever cover my Harry Potter pieces. Not for much. The series was important and pivotal to my growth and childhood. And then we have people that have said that Ryan's TikTok series has inspired them to cover up their Harry Potter tattoos. There's this comment that says, this convinced me to toughen up and get my behind the ear Harry Potter tattoo finally covered this year. I have 40 plus tattoos. Only one of them is Harry Potter and it bothers me every day. This is my sign to get rid of it. And like Ryan and these people, there are many other people that are choosing to cover up their Harry Potter tattoos. And then there is also people choosing to laser off their Harry Potter tattoos. this is so so much. I truly do feel for the people that got Harry Potter tattoos prior to JK Rowling's um how do we put it outbursts is, is that the best way to put it rampages I I don't know but yeah nobody can ever predict that someone that you have so much love for is going to turn into such a monster and I think we can definitely use this situation as a warning and I'm not saying you know don't ever get fandom tattoos but what I will say is there is a chance that some day down the line you may end up having to get your fandom tattoo covered up. You've just got to be super careful as to what you put on your body. I think whose opinions matter the most in all of this is those that have been affected by JK's 
opinions and many trans people have said in the past that if they see someone with a Harry Potter tattoo they instantly feel unsafe or on guard just in case these people with Harry Potter tattoos actually share the same values as JK and I honestly believe that some or a big portion of those with Harry Potter tattoos don't but how is anyone to know that and to that I say that is incredibly valid I completely understand and I fully respect that. The trans community go through so much on a daily basis. The majority of trans people face dangerous situations every day for just being alive. Take that into account, for just being alive. There are many trans creators that I come across on social media like TikTok and the comment section is disgusting. It is awful. I... I just don't, I just don't understand. I just don't understand how people can be so hateful. Trans people are literally killed for being who they are. And then to have someone that's a huge pop culture figure come out and just be like, trans people are predators and all of this crap. Do you know how damaging that is? This isn't just one person with one follower on a Twitter account shouting off into the abyss which is obviously still damaging, of course, but this is a huge figure spewing this BS to millions and millions and millions of people. <sighs> I'm going off on one now, I do apologize. This, uh, my, my notes have ended. This is me free balling. <laughs> anyway, I would love to know your thoughts and opinions on this whole subject matter. I just request that you keep it polite. Anything homophobic or transphobic, it just, I do not stand by it, I do not accept it, and I would feel that you would know better watching me, because I have always tried to be the best ally I could ever be, and I have always tried to be vocal, you know, when it comes to standing by LGBTQIA plus members, the community, so I'm hoping that I'm not going to have any issues in my comment section, and I would like to trust in my at least regular viewers that it's not gonna be a crap show down below <laughs> but i'm sure there will be maybe some people just walking on by through that will come across this video and just say horrible things but just know i do not stand by anything horrible that ever gets written in my comment section please and thank you okay trans lives matter to me it's something that I feel very passionately about and have done for many, many, many years. Do take care of you. Please do stay safe. And until my next one, bye.